Hi guys, we're live. Welcome uh, to our webinar, Focus uh, Level 6 to 7. I'm Sophia. Uh, I'm uh, direct from, La, from uh, Mayas Bologna, Bologna Mille. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Sophia. I am originally from London, but I have been in Bologna for the last four years. And for about a year and a half, almost two years, I have been working at Mayas. Um, and hi everyone! Hi Sophia! Oh, hi, well, welcome! Hi, I'm sorry I'm late. That's okay Jess, don't worry. Um, this is Jess, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Jess, I'm also from Bologna Mille in uh, Bologna and I come from London. Thanks. Um, so, what did you notice that Jess did when she sat down? She said two, well, three very important words in the English language, especially for us British <laughs> yeah, girls. And those words were? I'm sorry, I'm late. Four words. I'm sorry, I'm late. Um, this focus is, in fact, on apologising. And it's actually quite funny that they got the two British, uh, the two Brits to do this because apologizing is our favorite hobby. It's, uh, it's our national sport. We apologize for everything. for everything, even if it's not our fault, it's nothing to do with us. Um, one uh, joke is that in, um, in England, if you stand on someone's foot, for example, if you step on someone's foot, the person you stepped on will apologize to you yeah. and not vice versa. Yeah. We are very apologetic. It's a habit of ours just yeah. to always say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And notice there's a big mistake that a lot of students make when they enter a classroom. They will say, I'm sorry for my late. And this is incorrect in English. We say, I'm sorry, I'm late. Yes, I'm bringing it up now in the comments. You will see, I'm sorry for the late. This is not correct. Please do not repeat this. In English, the correct, uh, thank you. The correct uh, version is, I'm sorry, I'm late. I'm gonna bring that up. Oh, there we go. Uh, all um, of your comments are coming in now. Now we're getting your comments. So Hello. I'm sorry, I'm late. Attention, because in English, late is an adjective. It's not a noun. So we would say, I'm sorry, I am late, not the late. You can, if you want, use the noun delay. I'm sorry for the delay, but I'm sorry, I'm late is just much more natural sounding in English. Okay, we have, hello everyone. Hi everyone, we have Matteo, Caterina, Filippo, Rita. It's good to see you guys. Um, let's, uh, let's look at our focus then. Let's do it. Apologizing. So, if we read our objectives for the lesson, we will, in this focus activity, uh, look at saying sorry, how to accept an apology, and we will also look at making some excuses. And I quickly want to draw your attention to this picture of this dog right here which has these very beautiful eyes. So in English, we have a saying called puppy dog eyes. And puppy dog eyes are, is the expression you make on your face when you're very sorry for something. When your eyes get very wide and you look sad and you're just going, mm -hmm. this is out. Just like in the picture you can see on the screen puppy now. Puppy dog eyes. So, we have some questions to start off. Have you had to apologize to someone recently? Uh, what was it for? What expressions did you use? What was their response? We want to start off with a conversation in the comments. Um, tell us about the last time you had to apologize. What did you do wrong? Um, who did you apologize to? Did they accept your apology? What expressions did you use? What was the situation? Um, did they forgive you? This is an important Very word important. Of, um, that we will look at in our in this focus. Forgive. So to pardon someone and to accept their apology. Um, so 
while you guys have some time to write your responses, I'm going to ask Sophia, oh. have you had to apologise to someone recently? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to. Look, <laughs> I forgive you. Always, thank you. <laughs> Matisse is always me for apologising. Uh, Katharina says, I'm sorry I'm late. B, it doesn't matter. Don't you worry. That's a really good response. Great. Yes. It doesn't matter or don't you worry. Ah, here we go. Mati. <laughs> Matthias says, yes, I had to apologize to you too about sorry for the late, yes, which Matthias now knows the correct version is I'm sorry I'm late, but you, um, well, you'll always say it correctly from now on. Um, so I, I'm trying to remember the last time, oh my goodness, I think the last time I apologized was this morning when um, the technician I, the technician came to check, oh, Matthias says, I know, to check the boiler. The boiler is a, um, a machine, a mechanism in our house, which gives us hot water. So I had an appointment to do a maintenance on the boiler. And I wrote in my agenda, 8.30, half past 8 a.m. It was not correct. Uh, the appointment was 8 a.m. So the um, so Sophia must have answered the door in her pajamas. I did answer the door in my pajamas, and I apologized to the technician. I said I'm very sorry, but I thought our appointment was at eight thirty, not eight a.m. And um, I I think that for him it was just a standard. It was very normal for somebody to open the door in their pajamas. So he was fine. He accepted my apology, no problem. What Good. about for you, Jess? When was the last time you apologised to someone? Oh, I think small apologies, probably every day. But the last time I remember apologising, I was late to a dinner party, which mm. was actually dedicated to me. <gasps> you were late to your own party. <laughs> I was late to my own dinner party. And that's, so okay. um, <laughs> that's not very British of that's you. Really not, I'm becoming more Italian. <laughs> um, and I... Uh, I was two hours late and I arrived and I apologised. I was very, very sorry. And um, excuse me, how many hours? Left? Two hours. You were two hours late. The food had all gone as well. Oh it was finished. Um, but luckily my friends are very kind and they forgave me straight away. And they even went to the kitchen and made me extra food. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, well, um, so tell us in the comments have you had to apologize to someone recently why what expressions did you use did they forgive you um all right we have an answer here from Mathia. should we bring that up oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> i apologized to my dog because i promised him to go for a walk he understood my heart <laughs> that's the best that's a, such a good example and um your dog is so cute i'm sorry but <laughs> your dog understood that um he couldn't go for a walk that's very very sweet um and uh what um what type of dog well it's fair enough um, what kind of dog do you have? Um, what uh, breed is it? Is it a boy dog, a girl dog? And uh, anyone else, if you have any stories about the last time you apologised. Um, let's think also about some different phrases we can use in English to apologise. He's an English bulldog. English bulldog. Nice. Cool. We approve. Yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up from us. Um, so what... Um, what phrases can we use in English to apologize? We have the classic, I'm sorry, which we use very often. What if, for example, you want to interrupt someone? What could you say to interrupt someone? <clears throat> excuse me. Very nice. Exactly. Thanks, we can Sophia. say, excuse me. We also use this very often when, let's say, for example, you're on a very crowded bus with many people and you just want to get past someone, you can say, excuse me. So it's an apology, but it's very small for interrupting, for, um, for getting past people. If you maybe <coughs> cough and you say, excuse me, mm -hmm. a small, um, a very small apology. 
If it's something more serious, here we go, like Dolores Umbridge. Oh, we have Harry Potter fans in the house, which I'm always <laughs> happy to see. <laughs> Leonardo Calabrese says, excuse me. Good. Yeah. So sorry. Also, that's a nice one. Um, so rather than I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. sorry, just to exaggerate it a bit. Emphasize the Emphas apology. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we can also use the verb apologize. We can say, I apologize. Okay. Oh, here we go. Um, I apologize <laughs> with my girlfriend because I lied. I was out with friends and says I was at home. Oh my goodness. Um, well, <laughs> I apologize uh, with my girlfriend. All right. Um, be careful, not with my girlfriend, but to my girlfriend. Yes, a little grammar point here, which we will put up in the comment. I'm desolate. There we go. Um, I apologize to. Yeah. Apologize. Oh, yeah, excuse me. Let's put it into the past. Um, in English, the preposition that we use with apologize, with the verb apologize, is not with, but to. If you look right now on the screen, we have it up. So remember, not with, but to for apologize. We can write that. Um, also, um, I said another thing that you guys um, want you to be careful of is when we're saying I, first person I, remember that in English, it's always a capital letter. It's always a big I, not a small I. Notice at the bottom of the screen, the banner, I apologize to. It doesn't matter, it's not important if it's at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end of the sentence. When it's I, first person in English, always with a capital letter. Um, that's a very good example. Did she did she accept your apology? Did yeah. she forgive you? We are curious uh, to know. Um, another, so this is another verb that we can use for apologies. You can simply say to someone, I apologize for apologize for um a certain action but would you say to someone i apologize for my behavior or i mean it's very formal yeah i agree it's quite formal maybe i would not say it but write it write it in an email with your boss maybe um yeah a work colleague in a more formal situation yeah, in an email absolutely. would be appropriate to use i apologize rather than i'm sorry if you're writing but angela has a very, very good. good example um you apologize for someone for and then we use the ing the continuous form being always um that's very very good it's always right, in i in with ing if it's a verb i apologize for doing for being, for having, always with ing. So very nice, Maria Angela. Very good catch. Um, Here we have another one. I apologize to my cat because sometimes when she slept, I was waking her up. Okay, very let's nice. have a look at this. Okay. Um, I apologize to my cat because sometimes when she, not slept, but when she sleeps, yeah, let's put it all into the present, Katharina. You started with the present tense, apologize, so we can keep it in the present. When she sleeps, I can't, I always present wake, wake. her up. Um, I do this to my cat as well. She's just, I can't leave her in peace. She's so beautiful and adorable. I just want to play with her the whole time. I can't let her sleep. Um, Arita already also has a comment. I, oh, I apologize to my sister because on Saturday I can't go to meet her in Sicily because my flight was canceled. Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, that's horrible. I'm sorry that happened to you. I'm also sorry. <laughs> I feel bad that that happened. Yes. Um, shall we, you're using the past tense. We're talking about last Saturday. So can you change can't into the past? Maybe we can have in the comments, what's the past tense of can, can't? Maybe, Rita, have a look at yours, um, your example and try to rewrite it, putting can into the past tense. Otherwise, very good example, absolutely. Uh, shall we, shall we move on? Yeah, we'll give you 
some time to write that as well, but we will change the slide. Yeah, like let's go on. So language for apologies, we have our more formal expressions. I apologize for, or if you want to amplify, to exaggerate even more, to emphasize, I sincerely apologize. But as we said before, maybe don't say this, but write it in a formal email, a formal letter. Mm -hmm. It's kind of has, I think it has the almost the reverse effect when you say it to someone. If I said to Sophia now, Sophia, I sincerely apologize. Sophia may think that maybe I'm not being sincere. Exactly. It sounds maybe a bit sarcastic or ironic. And in fact, we will talk a lot about sarcasm in the rest of this focus. Um, we have also, I'm really sorry about, or I'm sorry for or about. Please accept my apology. Which again, please accept my apology. Would you say this? No, not so, no. Would you write it? Yes. I would probably write this um, again in a formal letter, a formal email to an, a boss, a superior at work. Please accept my apology. Excuse me, forgive me. Um, please forgive me. Now, ooh, yeah, ooh, that's if, when you really mean it. Yeah. If you have to say to someone, please forgive me, you did a bad thing. You did a very, very bad thing if you have yes. to say, please forgive me. That's serious. Um, all right, nice. Shall we continue? If you have any questions about these expressions. Um, oh, okay. We have can, more. could, excellent, can, very could. Very nice. Well Good done. job, Katerina. I'm talking about next Saturday. Ooh. Okay, so that changes it completely. Oh, that's fine then. I'm so... Um, I apologize. Oh, wait. Because on Saturday, I can't go to Meet in Sydney because my fight was cancelled for Saturday. Ah, oh, excellent. Very nice. Excuse me. Um, Rita, excuse us. We didn't realize that you were speaking about the future. If you're speaking about the future, your sentence is perfect. It's absolutely fine. Um, Mathia has another uh, example as well. I apologize to my mum because I didn't help her clean up the bathroom. Okay. Mathia, you should help your mother. <laughs> I think it's fine. Our grammar is okay. um, lovely, very nice. Well yeah. done. But help your mother, Mathia. <laughs> she works hard. Um, shall we look at our um, our dialogue here? Um, do you want to be blue? I'll be red. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. There was so much traffic on the way. I was worried something had happened. I'm glad you're okay. Sorry, I couldn't call you because my cell phone's dead. Never mind, it's no problem. I was enjoying the rain. Would you like to go for a walk? All right, <laughs> let's do some vocabulary in this uh, dialogue. Um, we have this word here, glad. If you look in the fourth line down, I'm glad you're okay. Does anybody know a synonym for glad? And then we will put another question out there. We're going to look at my cell phone's dead. Yes, if your cell phone is dead, what has happened? Why can't you use your cell phone? So we're looking for a synonym for glad. I'll put this up in the chat as well. Oh, and we already have a response. Excellent. Wonderful. Mariangela as well says happy. And Matthias says glad, happy. Or also proud, wow. yes. And um, I'll put up Mariangela's response as well. Exactly. Glad um, is happy for something. And also sometimes we can use it in the sense of proud, yes. We can also say the word pleased. Mm, also pleased. Glad. Um, maybe not quite good. Gianluca writes, glad is good. Not quite good, but happy. Um, oh, we have another example from Katharina as well. I apologize to my sister because in this period I can't go to Berlin where she lives. Yes, in general, visiting relatives in this period is um, difficult. It's difficult. difficult to do, yes. Um, okay, let's um, go back to my cell phone is dead. Cell phone is dead. What so could this mean? If my cell phone is dead, what is wrong? Um, 
while you're thinking of the answer, we'll also look at the final part where this person says, never mind, it's no problem, I was enjoying the rain. And here we come on to the subject of sarcasm. Um, because our opinion is that, well, do you think we have an answer? Maria Angela says, dead, it did not work. It does not work, but for a very particular, very specific reason. It's not broken. The cell phone functions perfectly, but the cell phone, if it's dead, we mean we have no battery, okay? Um, if the cell phone functions perfectly, there's nothing wrong, but there's no battery. So we say that it is dead. Um, so going back to, yes, thank you. So Rita says, um, battery, low. battery low, not just low, but it's hit zero. zero so gone. the phone is gone. Um, going back to our, yes, Marianne just says the recharge is out. Very good. Okay. Going back to this, it's no problem. I was enjoying the rain. In your opinion, was this person truly, sincerely enjoying the rain? Mm, yeah, we, even though it rains a lot in England, doesn't mean we enjoy the rain. No, I we don't think we this person was being very sincere. We would say this is sarcasm. And um, do you think this person accepts this apology and forgives their friend? Yes, yeah, but, but maybe they're not so happy. Maybe they. Um, they're still a bit angry or disappointed, annoyed, annoyed irritated, etc. Okay, shall we go on to our next, next one? one? Yeah. Let's look at another example with some vocabulary. So um, we have, I'm sorry I upset you. I didn't mean to be insensitive. How could you make a joke about my dead cat? You know how sad I am about him. I sincerely apologise. I, I wasn't thinking. Okay, just don't let it happen again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so let's look at some vocabulary. Matthias says that's a Brit answer. It is, Matthia. It's a full on Brit answer. Um, I'm sorry I upset you. Upset. Um, Let's have some ideas in the comments. What does upset mean? It can mean many different things. Some ideas about what upset means in English. Um, and while you are responding, we also have this um, false friend here, insensitive. Ah. Yeah. Do you want to explain for us this false friend, insensitive? Or insensitive. So, if we take away the first part of the word and we just look at sensitive. To be sensitive is to be emotional, mm. to have uh, a lot of feeling. Also, our skin can be sensitive. I know that if I use a certain product on my skin, my skin gets a bit itchy and sore. So my skin is sensitive. I, as a person, I'm sensitive, I think I'm emotional, that makes me sensitive. Okay, not sensible, which I think some of you may have been thinking. Yes, be, uh, pay attention here to the false friend. We have some responses about upset. Um, Katharina says upset is angry. Gianluca also says upset is angry. Um, Janoka also writes, upset is shattered, which is interesting, um, an interesting word, yes, in the sense of emotionally, your emotions emotionally are shattered. shattered. But we usually use shattered for when we're extremely tired, mm, shattered. when maybe work is too much, there's a lot of things going on, you can say, oh, I'm shattered. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Um, we would say that upset is, well, you are right, upset is angry, but it's also um, sad. Yeah, mostly sad. It's mostly, it's um, when you're upset, you're going to be angry and sad, depending also on the situation, um, but probably primarily, mostly sad. So he says, I'm sorry I'm upset you, I'm sorry I made you sad. I didn't mean to be insensitive, so to not be emotional, to not think about your feelings. 
And then the response is, how could you make a joke? Okay, uh, we have also upset is disappointing. A disappointed, Maria Angela, be careful. Upset, disappointed. It could also be disappointed, depending on the situation. Yeah, you could you could feel disappointment and say, I'm upset with mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And it's kind of expressing their meaning just in not such a strong way. Yeah. Nervous, like Katerina says, upset is also nervous. I wouldn't say that upset means nervous. I think it's more sad, maybe also angry. Mm -hmm. Nervous, I I don't think so. Um, but going on to a joke, a joke is a um, when you say something to make people laugh, say something that is humorous or comic, you make a joke. Uh, so this person has made a joke, has tried to say something funny or comic about a dead cat. Um, do you think that this person accepts this apology? Do you think? She accepts the apology. I think so. I think yeah. it's quite direct. Um, Aretha has a question. In this case, upset is a verb or an adjective. It's always an adjective. I'll write it in the comments as well. Upset is always... Um, oh, no, excuse me. It's not always an adjective. Um, no, in this case, it's a verb. No. Yes, I'm sorry. It's um, it's true. In this situation, it's a verb, not an adjective. But we can also use it as an as adjective, adjective to say I am um, upset. So I will um, I'll clear this up in the comments. In the meantime, what, what do you have? think about the response? Yeah, I think this person accepts. It's quite quite strong. Mm. Okay, full stop. And. Um, just don't let it happen again. This is quite a common thing to say to someone. Mm. If you if you don't want this situation to happen again, you can make that clear. Yeah. Okay, I've written some comments which hopefully will clear this up a bit. To upset someone is a verb. To be, be upset, upset an adjective. adjective. All right, let's go on to another example. Um I'm sure this is a situation that people will recognize. Um, do you want to start? Okay. You were so rude in front of my friends. Why can't you make an effort to be more friendly? I'm sorry if I seemed rude. I just wasn't in the mood to socialize. You don't have to talk to everyone, but you could at least look at, well, but you could at least look a little more interested. Just forget about it. <laughs> Um, and I think the hand gesture here that just forget about it is um, <laughs> is crucial. It's very important. Um, let's look at some um, grammar. Um, you were and some vocabulary. You were so rude. Rude is the opposite of. Do we know what is the rude? The opposite of polite. Good. The opposite of polite. We can also use the word impolite, but rude is just a little bit stronger. Um, we also have um, this word here, mood, in the, um, in the red part. I wasn't in the mood. If you are in the mood for something, it means that you you have the right, um, how can I explain it? Humor. The feeling, yeah, the, the right attitude, feeling. your approach to a situation. Yeah, so you're in the mood for something. If you're in the mood for a party, maybe you're feeling happy, sociable. If you're not in the mood, it means you're feeling antisocial, maybe that you want to be by yourself. Mm. Um, nice, Katerina puts it up here very well. Rude is the opposite of polite okay, okay. Um, polite in the sense of educated um, some people are writing kind and also gentle as other possibilities and friendly um, it includes those mm -hmm. senses but remember that polite is more in the sense of educated polite isn't necessarily gentle um, which is more similar to Italian, okay? Gentle for, in English, would be more delicate, for example. Um, but for um, for today, rude is the opposite of polite, so not educated. Okay. Um, 
what do we think about the um, response here? Do we think that this person accepts the apology? I don't think so. I do not think so either. Um, this um, just, just forget about it. Just forget about it. That's um, got a bit of attitude. That's yeah. That's not very. That's not very kind. That's a bit. It's not very polite. No, it's quite rude actually. It's a bit. Uh, well, it's not accepting the apology. It's definitely not forgiving. It's. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Go away. <laughs> Um, don't forget, obviously, if there are any expressions of words in these uh, conversations that we are reading that you are not sure about, always ask us. That's what right, we're doing for us. Uh, Shall we look at another one? Let's do it. Yeah. Oh, we have language now for accepting apologies. So we have no problem. That's okay. That's all right. I forgive you. Never mind. Forget about it. Don't worry about it. Don't let it happen again. Nice. So let's go through these for a bit. The first three, no problem, that's okay, that's all right. Pretty chill. Yeah, I mean, this is when you step on, when you try to get past someone or you um, accidentally bump, you bump someone, someone and they think, ah, that's all right, no problem. No, don't worry, chill. It's not a, um, a big uh, apology, it's not a big problem. I forgive you. Those are important That's, words. Those yeah. are big words. If you said to someone, please forgive me, and they say, I forgive you, that's that's, strong. that's something strong. But it means that they, they really are accepting your apology. Yeah. If they say, I forgive you, it's it's a good thing. Yeah. Really. Um Mathia, make this Mathia gives a good example. No worry, which is good, but Make it plural. Mm -hmm. No worries. We use this quite often in English. No worries. Yeah, it's very similar to the first one. No problem. That's okay. That's all right. No worries. No big deal. Um, no big deal. Also. Yeah, also no big deal. Never mind. Also, after I forgive you, never mind is another quite soft one it wasn't a very serious problem i, I heard this on the tube <laughs> of course you did um uh, yes but make it um make it plural no worries, no worries. um all the time <laughs> um sorry i didn't mean to bring that up uh, then we have forget about it now here we're going a bit dangerous because if someone says to you forget about it how do you feel? I'm like, oh, no. yeah. If someone says to you, yeah, forget about it, you're going, Ew. Um, They don't want to talk about it, but also they don't forgive you. They don't if, forgive no, you. No, no, you, you're still in trouble. Sorry. Sorry for my behavior. Yes, Gianluca, that's, um, that's fine. That's a good uh, way to apologize. Sorry for my behavior, absolutely. Um, then we also have don't worry about it, which is again, don't worry about it. I it's think nice. I say that a lot. Yeah, it's yeah, nice. Don't worry it's, about it. Um, it's accepted the apology, and then we have don't let it happen again. Oh, and just hearing don't let it happen again. I I know I'm in trouble. Yeah, yeah. You're you're in big trouble. You have a problem if um, don't let it happen again is. It's strong. It it's, takes me back to my child. Yeah, <laughs> it's a strong one. It means that you really, really made this person angry and it um, it was a big deal for them to forgive Can you. you think of an example of a time that maybe you said to someone or someone said to you, don't let it happen again? Honestly, right now, it's difficult. Yeah. It's difficult. I... I think, I don't think I, I can't think of an example now. It's not something that I've said very often. Can you think of something? No. Uh, oh. um, that's good. We're, that's good for yeah. us. Let's um, look at another conversation. Um, we'll look at a, um, a role play, a dialogue. Here we are in a restaurant, okay? Um, 
Give I'll, me red. Yeah, I'll be the um, I'll be the customer in red, and we will have here our lovely um, re receptionist, receptionist. Uh, waitress, receptionist. Okay, so hi, we have a reservation for eight p.m. under the name Clara. Let's see. Oh, I apologize, ladies, but I don't see you in the book. Are you sure? We called just a few hours ago. I'm very sorry. They didn't write it down. I'll have a table set up for you now. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay, good. Um, let's look at some vocabulary here. As we said, we are in a restaurant. <laughs> I love my Angela's example. You don't have siblings, do you? you I don't, don't. You don't have sisters. Which makes me, if I do not have any brothers and I do not have any sisters, it makes me an only child. Jess is an only child, but I, my Angela, and everybody else have two, not one, but two younger sisters, and I understand this very well. Maria Angela says, I used your clothes between sisters. Don't let it happen again. I can imagine. But it doesn't matter how many times. <laughs> That's a daydream. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you say to your sister, don't let it happen again. Your clothes will continue to disappear and they will continue to reappear on your sister. And you will go, That's my top. And they will say, No, it isn't. <laughs> and then. It continues always like this. Um, All right. So we have in the book. In the book. Yeah. I didn't see you in the book. When we, in the book here, the book we're talking about is the book that you can see also in the image. It's the book where the receptionist will write all of the bookings, the reservations for um, the, for the evening. Um, and when um, we say set up a table, she says, I'll have a table set up for you. Here, set up, well, in any situation, set up means to prepare. Um, yeah, to prepare. To prepare to build as well. Yeah, so also. I know that in theatre, they call it the setup when they are preparing the stage mm. for the performers with the lights, the sounds, the stage, the scenery. Also, a kitchen table. Before dinner, you would set up your table Absolutely. before you eat. Um, Madia says it's named Agenda as well, the book. Yes, I imagine that it's called an agenda. Okay, nice. Um, we appreciate it. Good, yeah. We also have to organise, to set up. Absolutely, Mariangela, that's a good answer. Good. To set up can be to prepare, but also to organise something. So, for example, I set up an appointment. I organize an appointment. Um, what were you saying? Appreciate, yes. If I appreciate something, it means that, um, how can I explain appreciate? That is difficult. a difficult one. Yeah. It's a nice uh, way to show, to express to someone that you understand the work that they are doing for you. Mm. You express your, um, well, your gratitude, your you're understanding. Saying, you're saying thank you for the work that they are doing for you. Okay, let's um, go on to our next slide. We're going to look at some situations, okay? As we will, as we read the situation, what we would like you to do is to write in the comments how you would respond to this person, how you would respond in English if you were in this situation, okay? So um, while we are reading and doing vocabulary, you can write in the comments. Shall we so, read it? The accidental bump in. Mm. The accidental, shall we do this? Bump Ooh. in. You're in a crowded metro in the city centre. Mm. You're carrying a lot of things and you need to find a seat. You bump into people, step on some toes and hit people with your bags accidentally. Good. Um, so we have some excuses that this person could use. I didn't see you. Your feet were in the aisle. Remember this word, aisle is the corridor in the middle of the metro. And remember, we do not pronounce that S. Yes, it's always aisle, similar to I will, the contraction, aisle in English. Aisle. Aisle, 
aisle. It means a corridor, but only in particular situations. For example, on public transport, like on a train. So I didn't see you, your feet were in the aisle, your dog was blocking my way. So my, your dog was in the way, my things are heavy, I'm trying to get a seat. So imagine now that you're on a crowded metro and you have this person with lots of bags and they're coming along and they're bumping and they're stepping. What can you say to this person as a response? Bump. This is a bump. Ready, Sophia? Ready for the bump. Bump like this, okay? So you hit someone as you are walking by, okay? Um, so some ideas of how you can respond to this person. Will you accept their apology? Are you going to be rude? Bump is like clash. Yes, but not so serious, okay? Mm. So if we take the example of two cars, okay? If two cars clash, we're talking about a serious accident, okay? We're talking about a big, um, a, quite a grave situation. If it's a bump, it's just, it's, it's not something it's too serious. It's a small hit. A small hit, exactly. Um, Mariangela has a nice uh, response. Sorry, it's not my fault. The driver kept <laughs> That's nice. I have um, not. <laughs> I hope, yeah, I seriously hope you, the driver is not drunk. Um, sorry, Siri. Sorry, it's sir. Sad. Is it all okay? All right. Well, let's um, let's start with this first one. I would say rather than the driver get drunk, I'd use is. The driver is, is drunk. drunk. Maybe that's why the train is going like this and you are bumping to the left and to the right. So let's try the driver is drunk. Um, then we have here Matthias' example. Sorry, sir, is it all okay? I think I would say is everything. Everything Is okay. everything okay? I'll write it down as well so you can see it. And we have the word here heavy. My bags were heavy. Mm. So, can you tell me what the opposite of heavy is? So that we make sure we understand this vocabulary. Mm. What is the opposite of heavy? Is everything. Is everything okay rather than is it all okay? So um, imagine your bags or uh, your backpack. Very nice, my Good, dear. very good job. Right, however, we're gonna look at that spelling because this spelling here is the light up there. I think that's correct. Light. No, it's light like this. No, it's. Uh, I think light like this is okay. Oh. Yeah, I apologize. Light. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So light is the opposite of heavy. Um, let's uh, look at a different example. Let's go on to another one. So, ha, breaking something valuable. I really hope this has not happened to any of you. Um, let's read through this. So, you are at a very expensive furniture store in Beverly Hills. Beverly Hills is in California, mm -hmm. maybe. I, my grammar, my geography is terrible. Let's see California. As you are looking at a particularly expensive lamp, so for light, you Bend over. So, um, bend over is if I want to see something closer, I will. Are you ready? Bend, bend over. over. Okay, so I'll bend closer for a closer look. But like the bend. as you bend over, you break another extremely expensive lamp. You look at the price tag, the little card with the number, with the price, and you realize you see that the lamp costs twice as much as your monthly rent. Okay. Uh, so, what are you going to say in this situation? And more importantly, what is the sales assistant going to say to you in I this situation? I think in this situation, I would cry. I would and run. use those puppy dog eyes <laughs> that I told you about at the start of the lesson. I think I would just run. I would just escape <laughs> in this situation. So we can use some excuses like, I didn't see it, it was in the way, it was in a dangerous spot. Maybe you want to turn this around and to the wait sales assistant. Yeah. 
it should have been behind protective glass. I'm a foreigner. Sophia, what is a foreigner? So, a foreigner is somebody who does not come from the country where you live. So, for example, uh, Jess and I were born in England, in Italy, we are foreigners. Mm -hmm. Be careful not to confuse foreigner and stranger because they are not the same. Stranger is somebody that you do not know. Exactly. So Jess and I are foreigners in Italy because we're English, but we are not strangers because we know you. Well, for some of you, we are strangers, but for our students at Bologna, Mille, we're not strangers. Um, so be careful with stranger and foreigner. And then I'm clumsy. Mm. So. Clumsy. Can you explain what clumsy is? Those of you who do know me <laughs> will know that I can be a bit clumsy sometimes. So knocking, bumping into things, breaking things, breaking things, dropping, dropping things, <laughs> dropping things like my water. Um, so somebody who is maybe not very coordinated, somebody who um, yeah breaks things a lot, hit things a lot. I'm sure you all have a clumsy person in your lives. Maybe it's your husband, your wife, your brother, sister, son, daughter. If it's none of those people, the clumsy person is you. Um, we also have the exact, the final excuse, because now we are looking at excuses. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I'm <laughs> sure if any of our um, watchers right now have children, you have heard this excuse every single day. It wasn't me. It's just the number one excuse. Let's go back to our comments. Um, California. Thank you, Mathia. It is in California. Take care of your bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mathia was watching. Um, Mathia says, I'm going to cry and I'm going to die. Yes. And Katharina says, I tried to go away. So I think Mathia is more similar to you in this situation, whereas Katharina and I are quite similar. We'll try to escape. Um, okay, everyone, we are running out of time. Oh my goodness, it's already. Shall we yeah, do maybe, maybe me. one more and then do a. Um, if we have three minutes, shall we maybe try to do one more? Do and one then more? Do these? Because we have a lot of new words for you. Shall today. we go over these then? Let's, Let's go, go over, over our new words. So, we talked today about puppy dog eyes. Let's practice now our puppy dog eyes. One, two, three. Let me see yours. Yours is good. Who has the better puppy dog eyes? Yours are pretty good as well. I would forgive you for anything. Yeah. So I hope you practice your puppy dog eyes at home. Um, is it your last lesson today? One more, Mathia, after this one, and then we're finished. Uh, we talked about a boiler, which is a mechanism, a machine in your home for the hot water, for the shower, for the um, heating as well. We talked about the synonym of pleased or happy, maybe sometimes also proud which is glad, glad, exactly. I'll write it up again so that you can, I'll write these new words up so that you can see them at home as well. So we have glad, which is our new word for happy or pleased. And I'll write this as well so that you can see it. Puppy dog eyes. And then we have what we say when our phone battery has run out. So Good. our phone is no longer on, it is off. The phone is dead. dead in this situation. The phone is dead, I have no battery. And then can you maybe give us a synonym for sad or maybe sometimes angry, angry. maybe disappointed? If I pull this face, Yeah, you, you lifted our spirits in this unreal moment. <laughs> well, we're glad to do that. Um, so we were saying about when we're sad, disappointed, angry. Thank you, upset. Maria Angela's got it. Great. We are upset. Very nice. Um, then we talked about, I'm going to write a sentence on the board. I want you to tell me what is wrong with it. Mm -hmm. Apart from my spelling. Is that correct? Yes. Do one last thing. There we go. Okay, we are also British. 
Okay, there's one sentence on the board and there are two problems with this sentence. Very quickly, for the last 10 seconds, let's find the two problems with this sentence. Drum roll. Finish up the lesson. Okay, no. No. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we have to finish. Um, so, guys, I apologize. I apologize. Good girl, to Maria my Angela. Sister. I Excellent. apologize to my sister. Remember the preposition, not with, but to. And remember your capital I's with your I as in I am, always a capital. All right, that's all we have time there. for. Thank you very much, guys. Thank See you, you for joining soon. us. Bye. Bye bye. Bye.